Hey, Ryan Michael Galloway here with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com and fresh off the Halloween gig tonight. I don't know if fresh is the right word. I'm kind of exhausted actually, but uh, anyway, we've been talking about band configurations. It, actually, I used to look at like, like this uh, back in 80 and 81. If you want some fun, go take a look at uh, RyanRocks.com. Go to the, uh, the uh, photographs and go to long ago, far away. You'll see some pictures of me looking like this when my hair actually is real. As uh, the folks I know in Urban Renewal say, or not Urban Renewal, I'm sorry, in the band 8-tracks uh, here, say that uh, I'm not wearing a wig, I'm wearing an aggressive toupee. But anyway, getting back to, uh, to uh, uh, the configuration thing. Now let's talk about quartets and up. And the whole point, um, when bands get larger, they get more complex. They're more difficult to mic, more difficult to get enough monitors for everybody, because if everybody sings especially, you now have a bunch of open microphones, a lot of room resonance, and the further those, those monitors are away from the mics, the more opportunity for feedback, because they bounce around the room. And uh, you know, I guess the trick is, and we'll talk about this later, get your monitors close, and, and so you can turn them down a little bit. And uh, that'll reduce some of your feedback and stuff. But anyway, the, the point is it's complex. It's also complex to rehearse a larger band. Um, any number of different configurations when you've got big bands and, and, or bigger bands. Uh, one of mine was uh, uh, Prima Donna in 80 and 81, uh, back when I looked like this. Um, five guys, keyboard, two guitars, bass, drums. Everybody had to sing harmony and lead was our rule. Uh, Richard Price on keyboard stack, wow. Just fantastic stuff, and uh, uh, Michael Shanahan on the other guitar, me on guitar, uh, Ben Mason on drums, and several different bass players at different times. Donnie Bobick and uh, uh, Rob Inglis, and it was just a great band. I mean, we just had a great, great sound, and it took a lot of work to make that gel. We had to get uh, vocal coaching from a from a uh, uh, an opera singer. We had to get some uh, work with a uh, a choreographer to, to you know get our moves at least a little coordinated looking but it was an excellent band uh, but it took an excellent amount of work to make that happen and that's all my point that you get a bigger band especially ones that don't need don't uh, read or sight read music it gets very complex uh, where I am I mentioned urban renewal a minute ago by accident I'll, I'll mention them for real uh, urban renewal is a 10-piece band they got five horn players four of those are vocalists a uh, number of other vocalists doing around the band and a lead singer. Uh, they got a drummer, they got a uh, uh, bass player, guitar player, keyboard player, and like I say, a separate lead vocalist. Uh, Soundman's Nightmare, absolutely worth the effort, but a lot of work to get that together. A lot of sound to support a band like that. Uh, a lot of equipment to support a band like that. So, uh, you know, if you're going to do a band like that, you better be making three to five to seven thousand dollars a gig with a big floor show and the whole bit uh, because it's just not going to be worth doing if you can't pay everybody but it's easier when a band like that particular one a lot of the folks read music and so they can put their charts up and it doesn't mean they can work without rehearsal but they can work without uh, a lot less rehearsal than they might otherwise have to so that's a little bit about larger bands and what it takes to run them and uh, and put them together and don't forget yeah, the, you got to gel sound and you've got to practice art and memorize stuff. You also have to gel personalities and the more that those more personalities there are in a band, the more difficult it is. So um, anyway, think about all that. Our next segment is going to be, we're going to jump from, I go build your band, get your gear, make some news and rock the world. Well, we're now going to embark on some stuff around the, uh, the um, uh, get your gear part. And uh, we're not going to be talking about uh, so much about separate, you know, like amplifiers and that kind of thing. We're going to be talking about your overall sound and lights, the uh, the thing that supports and uh, puts together your entire band on stage and how that works and what you need to pay attention to and maybe how you buy it and how you figure out what you're gonna what you're gonna match up with, what size band, what size room, those kinds of things. So, so stay tuned. It's Halloween. Uh, it's after the gig. I'm exhausted. I'm going to go sleep. But you, uh, you've been listening to Ryan Michael Galloway at We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.